Okay. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is actually start our project. To start our project, we are going to make a directory and call it node to do. We're going to do npm init. And it's going to ask you a whole bunch of things. You can answer them if you want. I'm not going to because none of them really mean anything. As you can see, we just have package name, which defaults. Oh, wow, I'm stupid. Sorry. So you need to actually CD into the directory that you're going to. Then you need to do npm init. Then you need to ignore all the questions. Uh, yes, this is OK. So basically, all it did was create a, um, a package.json, as you can see there. You can see it's package.json. Um, Name is the name of your application. Version is just the version. Description, self-explanatory. Main is going to be the name of the main file, which is index.js, which that's what I'm going to name mine. Uh, scripts is going to be your NPM scripts. So if you run NPM run test, it's going to run echo um, error no test specified, and it'll be an exit of one. Here, I'll show you what that means. So if I do NPM run scripts, as you can see here, Oh, not npm run scripts, npm run test. Sorry. You can see uh, it echoed an error or exit status of one. So we're going to use that, but not right now. And if you don't have Node or npm installed for Mac, you can use Homebrew. If you don't have Homebrew installed, you should Google it. Homebrew is a package manager and very, very useful package manager at that. Uh, I really love it. It makes doing everything the command line super simple. If you want to read about why Homebrew is good, you can do that on your own time. Uh, for Windows, you can just install it via you know the Node website, and NPM comes with Node, so that's fine. Next, we're going to want to get Postgres. I already have it installed with Homebrew. If you're using Windows, just you know Google Postgres. Postgres works on pretty much all operating systems. Oh, not Postgres, come here. Postgres works on pretty much all systems, but you just go to PostgreSQL. Uh, you just go to download. And download you know your Linux Mac Windows whatever not very difficult to install if you have any problems let me know and I'll help you walk through it we're not gonna waste too much time on that so make sure that you have Postgres installed and to get to the Postgres command line you're just gonna type PSQL for Postgres SQL and so what we're gonna have here is backslash L is gonna list all the databases you have so you can see that I have some databases already so we're gonna use this to do DB but I'm going to drop it for now. So I'm going to do drop database to do DB. And if you don't know any post or any SQL, I'll try and help you out as much as I can. So drop database obviously is going to drop our to do database. And as you can see, it's all gone. No, there, not there anymore. So you can either create a database from the Postgres command line, which is where we are now, or you can do it from your actual bash. So to get out, you can either type backslash Q or you can hit control D. I hit control D, it just puts backslash Q in there for you. But you can also create databases from here. So we'll do create DB uh, thingy. And then you can see it ran because it didn't throw us any errors. Now if I do psql backslash L, we have our database of thingy. Or you can create a database inside Postgres with create database. And this is gonna be the database we're gonna use. So go ahead and do this, to do underscore DB. Add the semicolon. This isn't uh, Microsoft SQL or SQL Server where you actually need your semicolons. That's just the way it wants it. So now you can see that we have our to-do DB, and that's what we're going to use. Again, if you have any problems setting anything up, let me know. I'll do whatever I can to help you talk through it. Just write down in the comments. So you can see that we have our to-do DB set up. Now that we have our to-do TB set up, and we have our project set up, we're going to start making new files. So I'm going to use WebStorm for all my development. You don't have to use WebStorm. It's fine. You can just use something like Visual Studio Code, Vim, Emacs, Notepad. That's, you know, your style. But basically, what we're going to do in this video for the rest of this video is just render something onto the screen to get us started. So we're going to create a new JavaScript file and just name it index.js. And so the packages that we're going to need for now are going to be Express. And that's pretty much it for this video. So we're going to do npm install, dash dash save. So what dash dash save will do is it'll throw it in our package.json. So if anyone pulls our project back down, 
and they run npm install to just install the package for us. So we do npm install dash dash save express. There you go, simply installed. So now it added our node modules folder up here, as you can see, and we have express. So we're gonna do const express is equal to express, or require express. Now you can see I have white squiggles under this. If you're using WebStorm and you get this really obnoxious error message, or you know, that stupid squiggle, you can go to languages and frameworks, Node.js and NPM, and enable the Node.js core library. And as you can see, now it's all gone. I really hate that, it's really obnoxious, but whatever. So now that we have that, we can do const app is equal to ex uh, express, and you just invoke it. So that's gonna be our application. That's what's gonna actually do the rendering and everything. So we are going to do app.listen. And then we're gonna say 3000. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna listen on port 3000. It's gonna run on localhost for us. So it's gonna just, whenever we direct our browser to localhost 3000, while we're running, it'll just show the app for us. So next we're gonna do app.get slash function rec res. And then what, what this means is our application, whenever we do a dot .git to the base directory, so localhost 3000, and that's it, we're going to have a function of request and result. So the request is the things that we're going to get, and the result the things we're going to send down. So we're going to do res.send hello world. Now we can go into our terminal. For me, I'm using iTerm2. You can use whatever terminal you're using. You can use PowerShell if you're using Windows. And then we're gonna do node index.js. As you can see, it looks like it just hangs, but actually it's running your server. So we're gonna pull up localhost 3000. And as you can tell, there it is, hello world. Very simple, nothing hard. So if you know we changed hello world to goodbye world or something, that's pretty depressing, but. It doesn't refresh. So what we're going to have to do is we have to stop our server and then node index.js and then refresh and then here it is. Goodbye world. So we're going to install a package to help us out with this. We're going to something called uh, nodemon or nodeman depending on how you want to say it. So we're going to kill that and then we're going to do npm install dash dash save dev. Now the reason we're doing save dev is because if you were to release this to production it will try and install all the packages under your non-dev dependencies. This will save them under dev dependencies. So you don't need to refresh your server while making changes on production because I hope to God you aren't making changes on your files in production. Don't do that, that's bad. Well, sometimes it's bad. Try not to do it. But basically this will just say that this is only needed for development. So we're gonna get Nodeman. I'm gonna wait for that to install. Basically Nodeman's gonna allow it to refresh automatically when we make changes. So. We're gonna go into our package.json now. So I'm using Vim to make these changes. Again, you can use whatever you want. And on our scripts, we're gonna add a new one. So we're gonna add a comma. We're gonna call this server. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna call nodeman index.json, or index.js, sorry, not JSON. So this is regular JSON, so you make sure to wrap everything in quotes like you're supposed to. It's not just a regular JavaScript object, it's actual JSON. So make sure to wrap everything in quotes and no trailing commas as you can see Vim is warning me about that. Your text editor might not do that. So after that, what we can do is we can run npm run start or run server. And you can see that nodeman started node.index.js. So if we go back to my web storm and I said res.send nodeman is cool and I save it and I refresh, it says Nodeman is cool. Very, very simple and it's very useful for our development environment. So next up, we're gonna start connecting to our database and we're gonna do a git request to get all of our data. And we're gonna insert data into our database via the Postgres command line. So stick around.